Hi everyone, Pierre here from Into Fly Fishing and welcome to another tutorial video. In today's video we'll be looking at the food sources that trout predominantly prey on. Yes, I know that if you chuck a black woolly bugger at a trout, even in a river or a stream, there's a great chance of it just chowing it. But if you want to become a more effective and accomplished angler, you need to understand what food sources there are that trout predate on or feed on and what time of years these food sources are present and the main thing is how to fish them. This will not only help you to tie better flies if you do happen to tie your own flies but it would help you to really fish them a lot better. So let's dive in and look at the main food sources that trout eat. We'll open the trout buffet with crustaceans and it's it's really an underrated or a, a, a food source that anglers don't really think of especially in slower moving water or lakes. The first species are scuds. I don't know if you've ever seen how really enormous the trout can get in Jurassic Lake or Lago Struble. If you haven't, go and check our videos out that we've done on this amazing fishery. We'll leave some of the links in the description down below. But the reason these trout get so massive is the abundance of scuds. These are small shrimp-like crustaceans between a quarter and about three quarters of an inch long and can be easily simulated on fly. In general, these are slow-moving aquatic invertebrates and they can be best fished with floating or intermediate lines, long leaders and a very slow figure of eight retrieve or what you can do, you can use the wind to help you drift the flies through the water column. Freshwater shrimps are slightly larger than scuds and they can attain lengths of up to 2 inches. I would generally not put on a freshwater shrimp fly in a still water or a slow moving piece of water unless I really know that the trout in that area predominantly feed on them during that period of time. Now let's talk about crayfish or small freshwater crayfish. Endemic freshwater crayfish species all around the world are under severe pressure they actually are a good indication if your water system is in very good condition or not. The reason why they're under such pressure is because of poor water quality. Everywhere, I mean, it's a well-known fact that water systems all over the world are under severe pressure in terms of water quality. And the other thing that places a lot of pressure on endemic crayfish species are invasive crayfish species. For instance, here in South Africa, we have endemic crayfish species but they're under severe pressure by a freshwater crayfish that was brought in from the US. That being said whether you are trying to imitate endemic or invasive species trout really go mad for for a small to medium sized crayfish pattern and the great thing about this is that these patterns are generally very good large mouth small mouths and spotted bass flies. Crayfish move slow on the bottom as they crawl around, but when they are frightened or they are under, under threat, they dart away very quickly. So just keep that in mind when you fish a crayfish pattern is to simulate these kind of movements until you find what works for you. Trout are very opportunistic feeders and they don't necessarily feed on aquatic insects or, or food source that only occur inside the water. They also prey on mammals. The main targets here are small rodents like mice and they can fall into the water accidentally or they cross from one side of the pool or the stream to the other. Whatever the reason is they find themselves in the water, large trout are known to eat mice without any hesitation. As far as trout flies go, there are a ton of patterns that imitate mice or, or small rodents. and they generally have a couple of similarities. The first is that they float because the mouse swims on top of the surface. The, this fly is imitating that and it has an incredible amount of movement. The tail and the, the fur and, and the, you know, the feet and everything sort of move about, moves about as the, the, the mouse swims on top of the surface. And this is what triggers a trout to eat it. Cast the fly up against the bank and as soon as it lands, start stripping relatively fast and keep making a bow wake as this is how a mouse that swims through a pool actually looks. It's also a good idea to up your tippet size slightly because 
larger trout will come and eat it they also do so ferociously so on that first set you'll need a thicker diameter tipper to protect and prevent you from losing that fish another food source that trout absolutely love are amphibians and here i'm specifically talking about frogs although adult frogs can certainly form part of a large trout diet, i want to speak about tadpoles now tadpoles can be very abundant in specific times of years especially in slower pools or back eddies in rivers and in lakes i believe this is the reason why small black micro buggers work so well for trout in rivers and in in still waters what i do in a river is i cast it perpendicular to the stream up against the bank and then i just pinch the line and allow the fly to sort of drift through the water column and it's in this drift that you get many takes that's why I pinch the line and as soon as the fly gets around 45 degrees I start stripping the fly in with an erratic sort of retrieve and this simulates a tadpole swimming from side to side that darting movement it's a good idea to upsize on your tippet here especially if you have fished in a stream and you fished five or six eggs maybe go to four eggs and just up that tippet size because the take can be quite hard as the fish hits and turns have you ever wondered why so many bait anglers fish with worms it's because they just work and trout can't leave them alone if you don't fish competitions or fish in a competition there's a fly called a squirmy wormy it's basically a rubber a round piece of red rubber or tan or whatever color and it's it's put onto a weighted hook and this is what you use as your bottom fly this thing absolutely hammers fish a similar fly which is actually competition legal is called the San Juan worm and it's really another effective worm pattern. Both these flies work equally well in rivers and lakes and generally fish a lot better in slow drifts or drag free drifts. In summer months there is a lot of life moving around on the banks of rivers and lakes. Terrestrials like beetles, hoppers and ants end up in the water and trout can really zone into these prey on them very selectively in my book ant patterns are one of the most underutilized fly patterns out there i don't know if it's because they are generally so small so it's hard to see the trout eat the fly but i think more anglers should really use ant patterns i fish a tiny ant pattern tied behind a larger dry fly and i use that larger dry fly as a sighter so when a trout comes up and eats something close to my dry fly i sit and many times fish ate the ant another terrestrial pattern that trout absolutely love are beetles now when a beetle falls into the water they make a big plomp like a plomp sound and be sure to imitate this when you cast a beetle fly make sure to accelerate on your forward cast and as that fly lands make sure that it lands with a good plomp and this activates the fish a lot of times probably the best known and most used terrestrial fly out there is a hopper imitation and for good reason trout go mad for these and what they do is in summer months especially if it's a very bright and sunny day and if it's a river that doesn't have a lot of vegetation or life in it the fish hugs the bank and sits right up over the overhanging branches and stuff and what happens is if there's a hopper that falls into the water they really quickly react and they eat it just like a beetle be sure to present your fly with good acceleration and a good plump because this activates the fish a lot of the times foam hoppers are also an excellent option for a dry dropper rig here we call it a hopper dropper rig and it is because the fly has so much buoyancy in it and you can float a much larger or heavier tungsten beaded fly with it now all the trout food sources we just spoke about are kind of special cases if you relate it to us humans it's like going out for dinner or having caviar or something it's it's their special cases but we as humans need our daily essentials like bread and pasta and meat and and fruit and all of those kind of things and this is where aquatic insects for trout come in as they form the bulk of a trout's diet obviously we're not going to cover the entire spectrum of all the aquatic insects out there we will probably be here for a year and i don't think this camera can roll that long 
But the main three we are going to focus on are mayflies, caddis, and midges. The mayfly is the quintessential fly fishing insect. and Trout feed on them throughout their entire life cycle. We're going to run through a very basic, quick rundown of a mayfly's life cycle, but it's actually a lot more complicated than this. In the larva phase, the insect lives on the bottom under submerged rocks or submerged structure, and they become dislodged when they are exposed to the river's currents, and then they're swept away, and then a trout feeds on them. It's in this stage that we imitate with mayfly nymphs, like a pheasant tail nymph, or a lot of these more modern uranymphing flies, or something like a gold ear hairs nymph, or a prince nymph, or something like that. These are the flies that imitate mayfly nymphs. When the insect is ready to go from the larva phase to the adult phase, which would be on the top, on the surface, it has to go through the emerging phase. So it has to emerge from the bottom right up to the surface of the water. And during this period, we call them emerges. And in this period, they're the most vulnerable for trout. Once the mayfly reaches the surface, they hatch, what we call they hatch. And then they go into the adult phase where they go and lay eggs. And it's in this time that we imitate them with parachute Adams flies, Catskill flies, and those true dry flies that we love. Another very important aquatic insect in a trout diet is a caddis fly. And very similar to the mayfly and all other um, aquatic insects for that matter is that the trout predate on them throughout their entire life cycle. A caddis larva looks completely different to a mayfly nymph. It actually looks like a short and stubby worm. And when you turn over rocks on your stream bed, you'll see there are these structures, these tunnel-like structures built with debris and, and small pebbles and sand. And these are caddis that built them. Caddis hatches can be huge. And the trout really zone into very specific size and colors of caddis. So it's a good idea to have a very good selection of sizes and colors, especially if you're fishing on a new stretch of water. Once you get to know the stretch of water that you're fishing, you'll probably narrow that down and you know that you'll have a size 14 in dark brown for the, these um, couple of months and, and you'll adapt your flies to suit the caddis hatches. Great patterns that imitate the adult form of caddis are the elk hair caddis, the CDC and elk, and the tabanas. One of the best still water flies that I love using is called a buzzer or a chronomid. You've probably also heard about a bloodworm larva, and these are all midges. They are mosquito looking insects, especially in the larva stage, and form a massive part of especially still water trout's diet. The most effective way of fishing chronomids is either in the larval stage or the emergial phase where they travel from the bottom to the surface. What I do is I attach two or three of these chronomid patterns, different weights, different sizes, on a very long leader on a floating fly line and I cast out to where I think the fish are holding. If there is a breeze, I'll use the wind to drift the flies through the water column and just keep in touch to make sure that you know or can feel as soon as a fish takes your fly. The other way of doing it is if there's no breeze, I just use a very slow figure of eight retrieve. I hope that you found this video helpful. And as you can see, trout can be very, very opportunistic and they can feed on anything that crosses their paths. They can feed on very peculiar looking flies, but I always recommend having those tried and tested caddis or mayfly or midge patterns in your fly box. Please like and subscribe to our channel so that we can let you know as soon as we release any future videos like this. Until next time, cheers.